Man, did you win again? Third in a row? How many years straight in the NCAA tournament? You know. You know exactly. It's 16. I know. Yeah, you know what it is. John, how do you feel about going to London as an adventure and the whole thing? Um, no, it, you know, uh, there's a couple things, just so you know, um, when Jawan Howard was hired at Michigan, um, I called him and I just said, listen, if there's any way I can help you or your program, um, we can talk scheduling and that's something that I don't do lightly, but with you I will. The reason is he took Bam under his wing. So you had Kenny doing what he did. He went right to that culture and had Jawan Howard take him under his wing. And look at what he's doing now. Got a chance for Defensive Player of the Year. He's got a chance for an All-Star. I mean, it's crazy. And I said, you took care of one of mine. So if I can help you in this. Um, now, I didn't know they'd be this good. <laughs> but um, so that's where it started. And so then we got together with, uh, you know, a neutral and then we a home and home. And um, so it should be a good three year thing for both programs. It should be good. Speaking of teams getting hot early, obviously, Ohio State and Michigan or Ohio State and Louisville had good wins early. What, have you talked to the team about, you know, how, or have you looked at maybe those games going ahead? Or, mm. you know? I'm worried about today's practice. All I'm trying to do, how good can we get? I said publicly, if we don't become an unbelievable defensive team, we will not be playing late in March. We will not. If we are that and we'll rebound and have some toughness about us, fight, then you know we'll have our chances to advance and do what we want to do. Um, the teams that are winning right now are playing great defense. Most of them have veterans. I mean, that's what it is, is you got to guard and you got to have some veteran leadership. And, you know, so we're my the two words that all I'm focused on these next two weeks, fight, fight for rebounds. You fight harder than he's fighting. You're trying to get open. He's fighting to keep you from getting it. You fight harder than he is. You're trying to fight for post position. You fight harder than he is to try to keep you from catching it. And if he's in there, you fight harder than he fight. You're fighting over a screen. Fight. Run him into the screen. He's fighting to keep you from catching it. Everything is on every possession fight. Second word is finish. Last four minutes of games, we have been atrocious, but we were last year too. And so now I'm working on how we finish the last four minutes of games. What we're going to do. What we're, what's your mentality? And so, um, yet the last two days, whew. Really, last three practices were like, literally, we might as well put helmets on. And uh, today, I got it. If you grab and hold, I'm going to let you do it twice. On the third one, we're running because they are like, literally, it's like lacrosse. They, I might as well give them sticks. So, um, but it's been good. They're, you know, we're still shorthanded, but I'm like, forget it. I don't care. Let's go. I've done this before with six and seven guys, so let's go. It's not like I haven't done it. I'm not panicked. I feel good. I feel good about my team. Um, but we're nowhere near some of these other teams. We're not. But there are other teams that were ranked there, and I said, they're not that good either. And it's proven to be true. Kyle, other than the cast, it looked like Nate was pretty much suited up for practice. one-handed practicing? Or no, no he's, he's still two, two weeks, maybe three, away from us figuring out if he can play. What does what a guy like that do? Watches practice, does his treatments, conditions, so that when he comes back, the good news is it's his left hand. Not going to affect his shooting, may even help his shooting. So now you're really that way versus anything in this hand, and not involved at all. I thought I heard you say on the radio show that he's just he, he practiced and then he's out two more days. So yesterday and today, knee soreness. So he's not he's not nearly ready. He practiced one day. And he, he half of the practice, maybe. What have you seen from uh, Fairleigh Dickinson on tape? If you've seen them on tape or something like that? Yeah, they, uh, 
They're, they're a team that a lot of switching, a lot of um, taking their fours and fives out on the floor and uh, trying to beat you on the bounce. And, uh, <coughs> um, you know, they're another capable team that's coming in here. And you're seeing now there are no, all right, we just show up and we play. Can't. Every game is, okay, use the day to prepare to play great. Use the shoot around to prepare to play great. Um, everything is based on that game day, and, and so game's a little bit earlier, um, but it's, uh, you know, we need this time, this practice time. We need to have another opponent, and then it goes to Georgia Tech, I believe, and then it goes to Utah, and then it goes to Ohio State, and I believe the next game would be Louisville. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking like, holy cow. Like, like this is, and at the end of the day, we may have the number one schedule in the country. Now, it's not where some of you'd like it to be, but at the end of the day, we still got to go to Texas Tech. Well, then is it fair to say that that Evansville loss was just like that big turning point for you guys? Uh, but it helped me, and it, it, you know, get my mind right where we need to go, because sometimes we all, like I've done it, where you get carried away where you think you play in your mind what your team is, and sometimes you put your head in the sand and, and I don't want to deal with it because we're winning number one in the country. And then that one woke me up. And, you know, again, we, we're still, we got a long ways to go, like a long ways to go. And individual players have a long ways to go. Um, but, you know, I, yesterday's practice, I had so much fun. I was screaming, yelling, and, and uh, I think I was in bed by eight, but it was, uh, like I told him, I'm having a ball. I held him accountable, put him on the line. Was not, if anybody's talking while I'm talking, get on the line, let's go. We're here to be professional. We got work to do, I'm not wasting my time. And it was like, all right, and, they, and they're great kids. If you demand a lot, you'll get a lot. If you accept mediocrity, you're getting it every single time, especially as a basketball coach, especially with young kids that have had their own way to do whatever they wanted. Now you got to raise the bar. And they're, they're all capable of reaching what I'm asking them to do, but they've never had to. And they, most of the time, their offense dictates their emotion, their spirit, their enthusiasm. It's, they miss three shots or don't get the ball or someone else takes two and all of a sudden, that's how you can't be that guy. And especially not on this team. I mean, the good news is we've never had anybody taken 50% of the shots, no one else shoots. There's, or two guys take 60% of the shots and then no one else shoots. This thing is, you're all getting your opportunity. Let's create good shots for each other. Let's play. John, you said teams reflect the coach's personality. How well does this team reflect your fight, your You know experience? what, I'm, uh, no, I, um, I watched Brad and I told him, I said, you're starting on a Division I pro program playing 30 minutes a game, you're shooting balls, you're making baskets, you're better than I ever was, you have more courage than I ever had, you, you have more fight, you have more toughness, um, and you're going to be a better coach than I ever thought about being because of this experience. And so I, I've been blessed to be put in certain situations and hopefully I care enough about kids that it's helped me do my job and I put that it's always on my mind, which is some of these kids, how are they feeling right now? I can't worry about how I'm feeling. Look, I'm 48 years old, I can deal with this. But when you're talking about these kids, they're young, they're 18 and 19. I can't worry about how I'm feeling, I gotta worry, how are they feeling? How are they taking this? Where's their anxiety? The kid doesn't look like he's sleeping. He's probably not, he's anxious. I can't believe this is this hard. Am I ever going to be there? Maybe I'm not as good as I thought. Oh my God, huh. now he's not eating. You lost eight pounds. What's going on with you? Come on, run. What? Hadn't slept, have it? I got to really look at this in a different light and, and maybe being the guy that was coming in the game with two minutes to go gives you some compassion, which late in the game, if a kid doesn't want to go in, I got no issue. I'll ask, do you want to go in? No, fine. I never take it personal. You know what the worst one is? You go up, the clock keeps running. It was, I did this, and the clock keeps running, 
and there's four seconds and you check in the game. No, you tell me what's worse than that. Come on, don't, don't worry about it. You're good. If a kid tells me he don't want to go in late, I'm good. I get it. Um, but no, I don't. Yeah, you know, I was a gym rat, like some of these guys. So I think I got as good as I could be. I'm way more athletic than Brad, by the way. Way more. He got that from his mom, I guess. She can't move, but can't dance either. Oof. Um, oof. They say that uh, I've heard coaches over the years say they'd much rather have a guy that's really rabid and just kind of channel that rather than try to instill the rabidness in. Somebody. Now you, I it, look the 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 minds of the kids operate different so some guys kids their minds go so fast that you got to get them to slow down their mind you don't want them to slow down their feet you just want them to slow down their mind other guys their mind moves slower and they don't react to things as quick and you try to speed it up because they've really never had to do it that way because they're always the best player and whatever I do is good enough you know, that's who I am. And so the, the thing that it's hard, you can't give a kid a why. He's got to create his own why. What, what are you doing this for? Is it ego? That goes away. Uh, you know, what, what moves you? What are you trying to do? Where are you trying to take this and why? Um, all the things we do off the court with Thanksgiving and Christmas is trying to show them the impact you can have on other people. And if you're, you become that, then use it for you know what what would you i've had kids from other from haiti say i want to start an orphanage in haiti well then get real good and do well and make a lot of money and go back there and do what you want to do that's a great why they've other other kids talk about their mothers and but um like i said this is for us i all i'm to, i got on my wall coach your team that's all i'm doing i'm really not watching many other games i'll watch five minutes of it and but I was with, at Brad's game. I may catch scores, like who won, who lost, but. Kelly, you started off saying that, that you need to be great defensively to be where you want to be in March. You're pretty darn good on the ball right now, especially with Ash. And what's the next piece of We don't fight. We have a lot of guys that don't fight. They give up on screens. They get hung up on screens. They don't go put themselves a body on people because they don't want that contact. They avoid contact. You can't avoid, you can't avoid contact in these practices. Literally, either you go at him or he's running you over. That's what these have become. And it's based on that's what this team needs. Um, some guys will back up and their defense mechanism is, uh, uh, it's good, I'm good enough. Uh, this, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not good. You're getting your butt beat by him. You're not good. Where, why, why do you think you're good? That's the kind of stuff. Let him come to terms and let him self-evaluate. I had a guy walk in the office and said, I said, how are you feeling? Are you all right? He says, you know, I know I'm not playing well. I know I'm not comfortable on the court. This is all on me. This is not on anybody else. It's on me. I hugged a kid. How many kids at that age, when they're here and it's always somebody else? If he did this and well, if you played like kid, you did this and he, and you got to hear that yet you got to self evaluate and say, I got to get this right. And it's just taking me time more than I thought, but I'm good. So got a good group of kids. We'll just see where it goes. Right, Thanks guys. Practice. Coach Skinner's coming right up.